Welcome back. I'm Sean Wildermuth. I've been looking at a lot of web development tools for a long time and using things like Vite and the Vue CLI before that and Grump and Gulp and it's been going on forever. The JavaScript ecosystem I find really interesting. In fact, I've wrote a number of articles for Code Magazine on this, including one that's going to be coming out in a couple of months about Bun. Bun is a new runtime for JavaScript, and there's a lot of hype around it, and maybe not all deserved, but I did want to cover something that I didn't have a chance to cover in depth in the article, and that was, what about Windows users? One of the things you'll immediately notice when you go to Bun is that there's no Windows version. There's a promised Windows version at some point down the road, but what if you want to start experimenting with it, see if it's right for your application, and you're on Windows? Luckily, I think I have a solution. Let's take a look. So here I'm at the Bun website, bun.sh. If you're not that familiar with Bun, it's essentially a new runtime. That means it's going to handle a few things. Now, so the runtime itself is essentially the engine that executes your JavaScript for you. And this may be what we've always used Node for, for tooling, and for server-side. And Bun thinks it has a better way to run these. In addition, it's added to the runtime a lot of things that had to be sort of filled in for Node. Things that we're used to on the browser side, like Fetch and WebSockets and all of that sort of thing. It also is an NPM-compatible package manager. And so their promise is that they can get the dependencies for projects much, much quicker. You'll have to see the benchmarks and try it for yourself, see whether that's worth it. And of course, the last piece is it is its own test runner. This test runner is compatible with Jest, which means you can execute your existing Jest-based tests using Bun as the runner without having to make any real changes. But if we come up here to install it, it'll say, Give me this script, which I know I'm pretty sure is not going to work on Windows. And it, in fact, says supported by Mac OS, Linux, and WSL. There's the magic piece. So if you want to start using it, you can use it on Windows boxes as long as you're using WSL. So if I open up a terminal, so let's go ahead and make this a little bigger so that you can see the commands we're dealing with. WSL allows you to run a script if you want. We're not going to do that, but I am going to want to look at which distributions I have. WSL supports more than one. I'm using Ubuntu because that's, for me, the simplest. And I'm just going to create a shell inside of here for Ubuntu for WSL so that we can actually see this. And let's make this one a little larger as well. And there you've got my username and my machine name if you want to try to hack me. Maybe I should cover that up, but I'm not going to. And so to, let's talk about getting it installed here first. I actually have it installed, but I'm going to go through the motions. The first thing you're going to need to do is it's called apt get install unzip. Now let's talk about this piece by piece if you're not that familiar with it. Apt get is sort of like winget or chocolatey and it knows how to install packages inside of WSL. Now while WSL is a version of Linux, it doesn't have a UI to it. So everything we're going to be doing we're going to be doing directly in the command line sudo, in case, again, you're not familiar, is basically elevating yourself to admin level permissions so you can actually do something like install software. So here it's going to ask for my password. And it was already installed, so it didn't add or remove it, but that would have installed unzip. And before we can install bun, we, that's the only dependency we really have. So we come back here, let's copy this script, curl, etc. And if we just paste that in, this will take longer in your machine because it's already installed on mine, but this is all that is needed to get it running on your machine. And so if I do something like bun-v, it's going to show me the version of bun I'm using. If bun doesn't work like this, go ahead and close WSL and reopen it because it would have added itself to the startup of a shell. So now that we have it, let's go ahead and use it, right? I could create a project, I could use bun directly here in my home folder, but I actually don't want to. I'm going to go cd back to the root, 
you can see that it has a bunch of directories and the one we're looking for specifically is mount. So if we do slash MNT and in my machine, I have a C drive and I have projects, coding shorts, and then let's go to a directory I created before called bun WSL. And so this is, if we look at it, this is on just a typical folder in your machine. Projects, coding shorts, bun WSL. Same folder. Now, bun actually runs faster if you do this development not on a map drive to your main machine, but on a drive that is assigned to Linux itself. But because I want to have access to these files a little bit more easily, I'm just going to leave it there. If you did want to do it in the in the Linux stores, you'll actually see Linux over here on my left in Explorer. And this gives me access to all those same files. If I did want to put it in a home directory, I could have done it all here and it would all be fine, right? But that's not what we're going to do. Just start by just saying init-y. That's going to create a new package.json just like you're used to with npm or yarn. And it made some assumptions about what we wanted to have there. And if we look at this, we can see it has a number of the files. By default, it creates TypeScript files, though you can have options on init to change and be able to choose those. But I don't want to get bogged into those details. What I really want to do is go to this folder and actually do some work. Now, you shouldn't need to install Visual Studio Code here, but you do need it on your main machine because it's actually installed as part of this. If I say code in this directory, what do you think is going to happen? Normally on a Linux box, this would pop open in a window, but there is no UI. So what happens here is it actually runs it, and you'll need an extension for WSL in case you don't have it, and they'll suggest it if you don't have it. And here is that same directory that we're using here. In fact, this terminal is inside of WSL. And you can tell that because it says this is bash and... So if we wanted to do something like run this, I can say bun index.ts and it actually executes this code, right? This is just a console message out to the console. I've taken this application. I haven't used Node itself, but I've used bun to create the project. I can use... And so the nice part of this is I can continue to use this and still manage the project on just a regular drive on my machine. Whether you want to do that is up to you. So we have a very simple bun project here, right? And you'll notice there's a package.json, and the only thing it's done is install TypeScript here and include the bun types in case we actually need them later. We could install more things, but you'll notice there's no package.lock because the lock is this bun.lockb. And so it doesn't create the package that JSON, that lock file you might be used to, it's a different kind of lock. It's very similar to the way that yarn works. And so if we want to do something like bun install underscore, you can see it did what you would expect. There's an underscore there. So one of the things you're probably going to also want is the bun extension in Visual Studio Code. So let's go to our extensions here, and I'm going to search for, unsurprisingly, bun. Now you're going to see a bun because some people are creating different ways of doing this. But make sure you're getting the one from Oven, which is the publisher of the Bun project. So Bun for Visual Studio Code, you can install it. And that does something interesting. So if we're on this index page, and let's break this up into a couple of lines, right? We should be able to set a breakpoint here. And if we look at this run the file or debug the file, it's actually going to use Bun to do that. And so if we just pick debug file, we'll see that it ran it incredibly quickly and we can have all those same experiences, even though this is technically this is technically running on WSL using bun in our case, right? So we have all those same experiences that you might be used to. And so hopefully I've whet your appetite for using bun and at least getting your head around what the hype is and whether the hype is actually worth it or not. I'll leave you with a teaser that my article when it's released does come to some conclusions about it. Though we're very early in the cycle and I expect that Bun will eventually support Windows completely. The only way you can use it directly on Windows today, aside from WSL, 
is to actually compile it by hand and then only the runtime actually works right now. So it's a big ask that they're trying to do. One of the challenges there is they're using Safari's engine to execute this instead of the way that Node uses Chrome's. And so I'm sure they're going to eventually find a way for all of this to work, but it might be 2.0 instead of 1.1, for example, because I think they're pretty far from it. There's so many features they're trying to add. And so, you know, my biggest advice is take a look at it, see how it works, and then maybe put it away until it bakes in the oven a little longer. You want bun to be a little brown on the sides. You don't want it to be raw dough. And right now it's closer to raw dough. If you've gotten this far, of course, please like and subscribe. That makes a big difference to me. If you go past the like button into the comments, ask questions. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to give you my opinion. Having that conversation in the comments really helps me know what the audience wants and knows the kinds of things you might want me to cover. Well, this has been Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts. I'll see you next time.